you know, there are so many farmers here, fifth, sixth generation farmers to learn from, and they're the best teachers around. Lisa and Mike Davis would be first to admit they needed a bit of mentoring when they started out here. They knew the neighbors might have been a bit skeptical. How could you not be? Here's a city kid coming, doesn't know anything, he's going to start a dairy farm and be successful and create a product on top of it. Yeah, go ahead. So they did. In 2012, the couple left their corporate jobs in New York and moved to Chelsea, Vermont, where they bought this 81-acre farmstead and a small herd of dairy goats with the goal of creating and marketing their own goat milk gelato. What kind of reactions did you get from friends, family? There was always a little bit of that, you're crazy. There's just no day off and you don't really run the show here, the animals do, so you're always on call and you're always working. They also found out an unlikely favorite goat snack. So this is what you get when they're done with them. Who knew that goats loved Christmas trees like that? More importantly, the new farmers have found a new home and a community here. It's the first time I can truly say it's home. Even if we didn't do this, I don't think I could leave. Not that they'll need to. Their goat milk gelato is now being carried by several major retailers. Not bad for first-time dairy farmers. Sweet dough dairy vanilla gelato. 13 years in the making. It's good. Good, right? Flavor and texture. It's hard to beat, and it all starts with the sweet little girls that we raise here. From Chelsea, we headed a wee bit west to Brookfield, Vermont, to check out some unique and newly uncovered history. The Brookfield Free Public Library is the oldest continuously operating library in the state of Vermont. Yes, it is. Not that they make a big deal out of it, mind you. We don't broadcast that or wear badges that say that, and our t-shirts don't say that, but um, it's <laughs> That wouldn't not... be very Vermont. -like. No, no, it wouldn't be. In the summer of 2019, a fascinating find in the Town Historical Society's attic. Original overdue book records. These actually show overdue finds for books going back 200 years. Why, yes, yes it does, <laughs> as, and which is ironic since we don't do finds anymore. Yeah, but think of what the interest would be now. <laughs> Amazing, there are still books here, because there's a big book full of unpaid fines. Amy, this lovely little New England, Vermont town full of scoff laws. Yeah, I know. It's shocking, isn't it? <laughs> Just down the hill is Brookfield's Sunset Lake, where preparations were underway for the town's annual Ice Harvest Festival, a winter tradition here for 40 years. All for fun today, but the ice that was harvested here in the 1800s traveled far and wide. Milk that left Vermont and central Vermont would have the ice from Brookfield Pond take it to Boston. Al Wilder's been the driving force for the festival and loves to let folks take a hand at getting a big old ice cube the old-fashioned way. Does this answer the age-old question, how many people does it take to drill a hole in the ice? Yeah. Drilling over, it was time to saw. I was only watching and I was ready for a nap. But I did get my turn and I can only say, this is harder than it looks. Circular motion, that's it. How many blocks were you hoping to get up here? Ice also drew us to Lake Maury in Fairley, Vermont, and the Lake Maury Resort. The inn was built in 1905. It started as a summer retreat for people coming up from the city. And about 20 years ago, we decided, because it used to close in the wintertime, we decided, I, I think we need to get out on the ice and do something. So they did. The resort created areas for pond hockey and hosted tournaments. Then, in 2000, they got more ambitious. They created a four and a half mile skating loop around the lake, the longest maintained skating trail in the U.S., and all of it free and open to the public. Anyone can come, it doesn't cost you anything. If you have your own skates, you can just park in our parking lot, come on down to the ice and skate. We just want people to get outside. Or even better, rent a pair here of long Nordic distance blades, which lift up from the heel like cross country ski boots. Recuperating from a knee injury, Lisa Avery opted to skate with some assistance. Never having tried long blades before, I could have used a little help too. How difficult is it to pick up Nordic skating for a newcomer? Well, we have your pessimists and we have your optimists. <laughs> the optimists do really, really well. The pessimists, it may take a couple of tries, but 90% of the people that try the Nordic skating get hooked on it. On the bumps and the crevices, it does amazingly well. Happy to practice on a cold, clear day, brilliant blue sky, and a beautiful and unique way of crossing a big lake 
in winter. It's incredibly peaceful. The views are gorgeous. Nothing like skating on a rink, 100%. Just like that. <laughs> And Nordic skating actually a really fast growing mm -hmm. sport. Um, you can obviously do it at Lake Moore. You can rent skates okay. there. And then of course the, the skating rink or the trail that they have, four and a half miles, always free and the parking's free too. All right, back to Sweet Doe Dairy. The uh, owners there say that they love to have visitors out to their farm. And Chelsea, it's a great way to sample some of that ice cream. And you can also grab a pint while you're there as well. Up next, a townhouse with a view.